Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Timbridge Methodist Church's Zoom service for this Sunday, the 3rd of March, which is the third Sunday in Lent. And our service this morning is being led by Alethi Virgin. And Alethi's theme this week is cleansing, renewing, and rethinking. Thank you, Alethi. So lovely to see so many people's faces on my Zoom screen. Uh, a lot of the people, a lot of you I know, one or two new faces, one and one or two faces from a dim and distant past. So it's just lovely to be with you all this morning. And I'm going to read, to start our worship this morning, Psalm 117, which is all of two verses. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we'll come to our first hymn this morning. I hope I've chosen hymns that you can all hum along to, sing along to, just listen to. The first one is in Mission Praise. It's 1040. Hum, now is the time to worship. Time to worship. Come now is the time to give your heart. Come just as you are to worship. Come just as you are before.
come just as you are, come. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to be in a church. Come, let us worship our Lord. And so we come to our prayers, our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers of praise and adoration. For we have a wonderful God who cares for us all. So let us pray. Lord God, on a day like today, when the, we wake up to find the sun shining, it is so easy to give you thanks and recall what a wonderful Lord you are. We praise you, Lord, for your creation, for the sea that laps our shores, for the moors that stand behind us. We are so lucky, Lord, that we live in a part of the country where there is so much beauty, so much that is yours and your, of your making. We thank you that we are coming out of winter, a time when the plants and the animals are resting, ready to burst into spring with new birth, new blossoms on the tree, primroses on the banks by the roads, lambs in the fields, and soon calves to join them. So much to be grateful for, Lord. And you do it because you love us. Now just take a little while in silence to think of anything that you have in particular you want to praise God for today. Lord, we praise you for all you've done for us, all you've done in the past, all you will do in the future. But we know, Lord, that sometimes in our noisy, busy, slack lives, we sometimes make a mess. We make a mess of the world, we upset our friends, we just do and say foolish things. Lord, we have no intention of hurting anyone. But what is so wonderful is that we know through Jesus, we are forgiven all those mistakes that we make, whether they're intentional or not. Now, Lord, we come to you this morning full of joy, full of hope, full of praise. And now we join together with saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we come to our next song. It's Mission Praise 367. Jesus is Lord.
And now having sung that wonderful hymn about Jesus being Lord, we have two readings. And Norma is going to read our first reading, which is from Exodus. And then Pippa will follow on reading from John. Thank you, Norma. Thank you. Our first reading is Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17, reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in heavens or on earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of your Lord, your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honour your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord the God, Lord your God, is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbour. You must not covet your neighbour's house. You must not covet your neighbour's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbour. Thank you, Nook. Thank you, Norma. And what a recipe for living a decent, wholesome, loving life. Wonderful. So thank you for that reading. And now Pippa. The second reading is from John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22, reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Jesus clears the temple. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. So Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. Then he drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers' coins over the floor and turned over their tables. Then, going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures. Passion for God's house will consume me. But the, Jesus, but the Jewish leaders demanded, what are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What, they explained, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you can rebuild it in three days. But when Jesus said this temple, he meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, 
His disciples remembered he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Amen. Thank you so much, Pippa. Thank you both for expressing what these words say so beautifully. Uh, and I love the building up of the temple that Jesus says he means himself. And we are getting closer and closer to that time when on Good Friday we remember the crucifixion and then we remember on Easter Day his resurrection and the rebuilding of him as temple. Now we come to, um, we have another hymn and it's Mission Praise 14. It's All Heaven Declares, Mission Praise 14. glory of the risen Lord who can compare with the beauty of the Lord forever he will be the Lamb upon the throne I glad Glory of the risen Lord Who once was slain To reconcile man to God Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne I glad Before I begin my talk this morning, I just want to say thank you to Betty for choosing such wonderful images to put up. I just love that rainbow. It's just full of hope, full of joy, full of love. So thank you, Betty, for choosing some jolly good images. And so we've come to the third Sunday of Lent and we're well into our Lenten journey. And for me, I always think Lent is a time of reflection, of looking inwards and of contemplation. In this crazy, noisy world we live in, the occasions when we can actually withdraw and be silent are few and far between. I don't know if you know, but after the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, that was when the first period of Lent was instituted. And at that time, of course, it was the monks and religious who could spend 
40 days in prayer and fasting. It was an interesting institution, but the priests who were at the Council of Nicaea decided and felt that Lent should be remembered. There should be some connection between Jesus suffering in the desert, his time of contemplation, building up to Easter when it, everything becomes joyful. So in these days of build up to Easter, we look at those things today which affected God and Moses. And then we look at Jesus' life and mission. Maybe we're not able to retreat from the world. Maybe we can't spend 40 days alone and isolated. But we individually can think about and consider our lives of faith. The reading we had from Exodus, which we heard earlier, follows on the stories of God releasing the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. It follows their Israelites' trials and tribulations as they journeyed through the desert. And God has now promised that he would lead them into the promised land. A land beyond all imagination, a land flowing with milk and honey. But at no point has God told them how long it was going to take to get there. No, it wasn't just a week or so. It would be years. But the Israelites in their journey were unaware of this. All during their exile, God had sport, supported the Israelites through that journey in the desert. And during the this time, they had pretty much been well behaved and overall had followed the precepts of their faith. They were, on the whole, good, faithful Jews. But now they were beginning to get impatient and were looking around for an answer to what they perceived to be all their huge problems. They were fed up with being in the desert and wandering with no end in sight. So the Lord took matters into his own hands and he called Moses up onto the mountain. He, the Lord, was seeking to pull the Israelites, Israelites back to him to get them focused back onto who was their Lord God. We all know the Ten Commandments very well. Very often they're written up in churches over the altar. Something to be thought about and considered when you're in church listening to the sermon. But in fact, there are a lot more instructions that God gave to Moses on that mountaintop. And he wanted to get them to understand that their journey would have an end. But like all journeys through life, they can sometimes be very complex and very confusing. And I think that Israelites were very frustrated at the length of time that their journey was, was taking them and seemingly going absolutely nowhere. Now, as a child, I was often dragged up onto Dartmoor for Sunday walks. We lived in Exeter, uh, but my pa parents had lived around about Bovey and indeed got married in one of the churches here. 
walking on Dartmoor in the on Sunday to me was a huge frustration. I could think of better and more interesting ways of spending a Sunday. But then one day, Dad took us up to Buckland Beacon. And there are the Ten Commandments chiseled into huge lumps of granite. I was just fascinated. I wanted to know why somebody had done that and who had done it. The Ten Commandments on the mall, written for everybody to see. And then, of course, came, but how on earth would Moses carry two huge lumps of rock down from the mountain top? Always seemed a bit of a puzzle to me until I later learned, of course, that the commandments were written on fairly small tablets of clay or stone and Moses would have been easily able to carry them down that mountain. So we've got a set of rules that God has given the Israelites, how they should live their lives, how they should look after each other and respect each other. So we move forward a few centuries and then we find Jesus, along with a lot of other people, making their way to the temple in Jerusalem for the Passover. And there it was that Jesus found the temple courtyard had been completely desecrated. Now, the area where the animals were being sold for sacrifice and where the money changers were, was in the court of the Gentiles. And this was an outer court where foreigners could come and change their local currency into the currency that would be able, that would enable them to buy their sacrifices. Jesus was furious that the temple was being desecrated in this way. Not just that it had been turned into a marketplace, but that the market sellers and the money changers and the people of the selling the sacrificial animals were cheating the worshippers, many of whom had come a long distance to worship at the temple and could not possibly have brought their animals for sacrifice that far. The money changers in particular could charge what they liked and charged extortionate rates of exchange for the only currency for which you could buy the animals for the sacrifice was the money that was kept in the temple. It had to be changed. Jesus was also frustrated, I think, that this outer court was a place full of the sound of animals, sheep bleating, goats bleating, cattle lowing, birds singing, full of people shouting and arguing. And I leave you to imagine what the smell must have been like. The temple in Jerusalem should have been a place of sanctuary and peace. And it wasn't. God created a beautiful world for his people to inhabit. And over the years, humankind has done the best to, to destroy most of it. I find this very frustrating, but I personally am in no position to set out laws on tablets of stone or stride into situations that need addressing. What I can do is to be made 
more aware of the situations in the world that need addressing. I need to come out of my comfortable Devonian bubble and set about making changes in my own life. And in particular, the way I lead my life and the effect that it has on the people I touch. This period of Lent gives Christians the opportunity to reflect on their faith. Maybe reflect, rethink their faith life and perhaps make small changes, tweaks here and there. It's a very personal matter and we can only make changes in ourselves. We cannot change other people. Our final hymn today is We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. Good news for all, for all throughout the earth. The gospel of a saviour's name. We sing his glory, tell his worth. And now in Lent is a good time to proclaim the gospel to all those who know nothing of the meaning of Shrove Tuesday, Ash Wednesday, Palm Sunday, Good Friday and Easter Sunday. To so many people, they don't even know the names of these days, let alone why they're so important. And I'm beginning to feel frustration rising up in me. Frustration that the Christian calendar has been very often usurped by commercialism. I will change. I will re-examine my feelings. I will go and proclaim the gospel to all. And with God's blessing, make a change in me. And to end with, I want to share with you something that happened yesterday. In Ashburton, the Methodist ch Church has a community project. It's called Growing Space. Yesterday, which turned out to be a beautiful morning like this morning, a I and a young explorer harvested all our daffodils on our growing space. And then we went round the town giving them away. The effect was extraordinary and beyond anything I imagined. Smiles from strangers as we said, would you like some daffodils? Conversation, endless conversations with people I'll never meet again. And curious glances from passers-by. It was a joy. And my young explorer who was with me, who had started out being so shy and terrified at giving away a few flowers, blossomed herself. It was such a joy to do, be doing that. In giving away a really quite insignificant gift of a few flowers, joy flowed. And it was, it was really charming and touching to see people around the town touching their four little daffodils. Christians have a gift to give away. It's the gift of the gospel. And this is a very significant gift for all, for all throughout the world. But sadly, it's not always received very well. But I think we should do it anyway. Amen. We have another hymn. I do like singing hymns. And I do enjoy being able to sing here without anybody being able to hear me. So our next hymn is 
Mission Praise 1072, In Christ Alone. And so we come to our time of intercessions and I'm looking on the chat and no one has put any prayer offerings up, but I do have a long list of them, which we will use during these prayers. There will also be time of silence when you can bring your own prayers to the Lord. This is a time for me when I use my imagination. So I'd like you to sit back, relax, maybe close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing that, and imagine that you are standing on the edge of a small lake.
and you're going to throw stones and pebbles into this lake and watch as the ripples move further and further out towards the shore. The first stone you throw in is quite small. So the ripples it creates are quite little. And in those ripples, we pray for ourselves. For the, our little lives that reach out to others, reach out to those we pass in the road, those who serve us in the shops. We pray for ourselves and for what we might do to bring the gospel to others. The next rock you pick up is a little bit bigger. You throw this into the center of the lake and the ripples are larger and they represent prayers for our family, for our close friends, for those that we know and love dearly. Our families may be far away but they're important to us and we remember them always in our prayers. We pray for friends, friends who can be all over the world, but we think of them, we pray for them and remember times spent together. Our next rock is a little bit larger and the ripples from that go out to those people, our friends, our family, so many people that we know or who have heard, we've heard of who need our prayers. For those who are physically unwell, for those who are mentally unwell, for the lonely, for the homeless. I'm going to mention some names. The list is not exhaustive and I'm sure you will have your own personal memories and prayers. We bring before the Lord today, Ty. Jenny's mum, Hope, Sharon and her father, Sharon and her partner Mark, Saskia, Anita, and now in a time of silence, I invite you to bring to the Lord the names of people that you know and love, who need our prayers for health and well-being. And now you throw yet another rock into, into the center of the lake and the ripples extend further and further. And the prayers in this, these ripples cover the whole of our country. 
that seems to be coming more and more of a turmoiled place, a troubled place. We pray for our politicians, that they might understand the needs of their fellow countrymen. They may understand what it is to live in a beautiful country, but be without a job, be without sufficient funds to feed their family. We pray for all our fellow countrymen, pray that we would be united in fellowship and love. And finally, the largest rock of all, which we throw into the centre of the lake and the ripples stretch out, reaching the shore all the way round. These prayers are for the world, the world which our Lord has created and which seems to be such a troubled place. We pray for the countries and the population of Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, Israel, the Yemen, and many countries in South Africa where there is conflict and frightened people. We pray for the world that our Lord has created and the world in which we live. We bring all our prayers to you, Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <sighs> and so we come to our final hymn, Ooh. which is, as I said earlier, we have a gospel to proclaim. Let's go out and proclaim it. It's Mission Praise 728. We have a gospel to proclaim.
And now the blessing of the God that pres present from the dawning of creation be with us all. And the blessing of the Son who encircles us in the protection of his presence be with us all. And the blessing of the Spirit who invites us to new adventures in faith be with us all, yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And I'd like to thank all of you who have been joining in with worship this morning, wherever you may be. Our thanks from Tinmouth Methodist Church Circuit, all our many churches in the area, and thanks to Jeff and Betty who control all the technical stuff. Thank you for joining us and see you again soon.